So now we're going to move on to understanding what economic theory came up when classical economic theory seemed to fail nations. Remember how we said classical economic theory lasted for probably a couple hundred years and then during the Great Depression, classical economic theory wasn't working. Um, the invisible hand, laissez-faire, it just wasn't working. People, uh, the economy was struggling, uh, leaders did nothing just like classical economic theory said they should and short-run aggregate supply did not recover output in the economy. Enter John Maynard Keynes and Keynesian economic theory. John Maynard, Maynard Keynes, he was an economist who had this idea that uh, sometimes, especially in cases of a recessionary gap, that the government does need to intervene. The government has to uh, do something to increase demand so that the economy can come out of a recessionary gap. And so what we're going to discuss in the, in the next several segments is Keynesian economic theory. Now, it's important to understand that Keynesian economic theory is in a way a competitor to classical economic theory. But a better way of thinking about it is it's more like um, a solution to a problem that wasn't able to be solved by classical economic theory um, back in the first half of the 20th century. All right, so here's what we're going to say. Just like we started with assumptions, uh, we're going to start with the assumptions or some of the assumptions uh, of Keynesian economic theory. And I'm going to give you five assumptions, five of the assumptions that are made by Keynesian economic theory. The first assumption, which we uh, mentioned under classical economic theory, uh, we wondered if maybe it was a problem. Well, Keynes said, yes, it's definitely a problem. The first assumption is that wage rates are flexible going up, but not going down. What that means is that uh, workers, labor, they're okay with the wage rate in the labor market going up. They're okay with accepting more money, okay? But when it comes to time in the labor market for wage rates to go down, oftentimes they can't go down. It's called a ratcheting effect. They move smoothly in one direction, but in the other direction, they, there's resistance and it's hard for them to, for wages to come back down. Oftentimes because of labor unions or labor contracts that require businesses to pay a certain wage uh, until the contract is over. Uh, also minimum wages uh, prevent wage rates from falling and other considerations. The second assumption that Keynesian economic theory makes is that the economy is not self-regulating. Meaning that intervention is necessary by government leaders. Especially during a recession. Okay? Uh, the third assumption, consumption spending is the driving force in the economy. Now when I say consumption spending, uh, what I mean is this, remember uh, the calculation for total expenditure in an economy? That total expenditure, all of the money that is spent by all of the people in the economy is equal to consumption plus investment plus government spending plus net exports, right? Okay, well, this is what Keynes is talking about. He's saying consumption. Purchases by individuals and households by far is the largest chunk and the most influential chunk of total expenditure. And he says that that is what drives the economy. The economy is good or bad. The economy is doing well or not so well. The economy is healthy or unhealthy based on how good consumption is. And so consumption Keynes says consumption spending is the driving force in the economy. All right, our fourth assumption is that consumption is mainly influenced by income.
What that means is this, is that the, the primary thing that's going on in the economy, which is uh, household income, how much money households earn, is the primary thing that affects whether consumption goes up or down. And the idea here is that when income goes up, when, when households have more income, consumption spending goes up. That makes sense, right? If, if individuals have more money in their pocket, then they're, going, they're able to and they will spend more money. But if income goes down in the economy, meaning households have less money, then that means that consumption will go down. And that most of the other considerations uh, are not as heavily uh, uh, um, of a cause of consumption. And we investigated this idea. We talked about this several lessons ago, where we broke down consum or we broke down total expenditure, which affects aggregate demand. I want to remind you, we said that total expenditure, an increase in total expenditure, results in an increase in aggregate demand, which shifts the aggregate demand curve to the right. And we said, or, or a decrease in total expenditure would lead to a decrease in aggregate demand. And we said that total expenditure is primarily affected by its four components. Investment, consumption, government spending, and net exports, right? And then we said, we identified what affects consumption, what affects investment, government spending, and net exports. And one of the things that we said affects consumption was income in the economy. And so this link right here is the link that Keynes is highlighting. He's saying that probably among all of this, that the most important thing that's going on in the economy that affects real GDP is income's effect on consumption, affecting total expenditure, and affecting aggregate demand. Now, does that mean that investment in government spending and net exports don't play a role? Oh, they sure do. You're going to see today and in uh, the next several videos, you're going to see how these play a role in affecting income and consumption, total expenditure and aggregate demand. Okay. All right. So that's our fourth assumption that consumption is mainly influenced by income. And our last assumption, our final assumption, our fifth assumption is that changes in income, so change in income, I want to remind you that the, this Greek letter delta, it represents the word change. Change in income uh, does not, does not directly affect investment, government spending, or net exports. That is to say that when income changes, consumption will change. But when income changes, Investment, government spending, and net exports won't change directly. They will change because of consumption changing, but they won't change directly. I'm going to change this to a capital I. We're going to refer to income as a very important concept, so we'll capitalize that. Okay. All right, so these are five of the assumptions of Keynesian economic theory that are going to drive our learning and our understanding about this theory.